Well, hello, Band in the Box users. This is Henry Clark, Henry Clark's channel. And of course, I devote a part of my channel to doing things in Band in the Box. And I did a testimonial of, oh, three weeks ago. It's out on the web now, right? And I talked in that testimonial about the evolution of Band in the Box and how I've seen it change over the last few years with the integration of loops and things like that. I said that when it first came out, you know, and actually somebody wrote in the forum said that, you know, they thought Band in the Box was kind of elevated music, you know, right? Well, it's not, it's really not. There's a lot more that you can do within the product, but you got to take a little time. You got to go through some things, right? Again, you know, so, and this here, hear that beat in the background, right? That beat in the background was actually made in Band in the Box using loops. Now it's using what they call acid loops, and acid loops, the nice thing about acid loops is that they will change with the tempo and with the actual range, the pitch of the song. So they will automatically make that progression for you, and that's really important if you're trying to do loops. But what I'm gonna show you guys is I wanna show you guys, oh, wait a minute, subscribe, 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 that's right, I can always use more subscribers. Now that I got that out of the way. But I'm gonna show you guys today how I took a song and I said I wanted to do a disco song, right? So I said, okay, I wanna do a disco song. It's gotta be an old soupy ballad, right? And I wanna speed it up and I wanna add a disco flavor, disco slash house flavor to it because a lot of times stuff is house today, right? So I wanted to do that and in this video I'm gonna show you guys how I put this song together, right? Not the whole thing, of course, no, we don't wanna take all the time of doing that. But I'm gonna show you guys how I incorporated loops and band in the box and put the song together to give it that disco slash house flavor. So again, so I'm gonna head on over to my band in the box and show you guys how I put together Walk On By, which is an old Dion Warwick song, but now it's housey. So I wanna show you guys how I put that together. So again, hold on a second and I will be right back. Okay, so what I did was again, I wanted to do a disco song. I wanted to take an old song, old super ballad, right? I wanted to speed it up and I wanted to change it into a disco slash house song. And the most important thing about a disco slash house song, of course, is the beat. Gotta have that beat, right? But I needed to find a pattern in disco, right? So again, if you saw any of my videos before, I've been using a blank slate here, right? I've taken it out, throwing the chords in for Walk On By. And I needed to find a disco beat for it. Now, I happened to pick Funky Schlager in this one, and I don't even know what Funky Schlager means, right? But I picked this actual pattern for it. And um, you can, I, I'll just play it for you really quick. You can get an idea of how it sounds. And I'm like, okay, it's, uh, you know, it, it sounds okay, but it's too slow and the beat is boring to me. The drums are okay, but they're boring, right? But I looked at some of the other patterns, and if you've seen any of my videos about picking a style, you can see how if I type in disco, right, I typed in disco up here, right, and it gave me some other patterns of doing a disco song. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them because I don't want the video to be too long, right? This one is a little bit longer, but I don't want it to be too long. But I picked Funky Schlager as opposed to some of the other disco beats or disco patterns that I have in my system, right? So I said, okay. So I'm going to take this 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 Funky Schlager and I'm going to run with it, right? Again, it's 110 beats per minute, right? So the first thing I need to do is, again, I need to beef these drums up because these drums are whack. These drums, they're not whack. That's not a good no, they, but they just don't have, they're okay. I like the hi-hat, but I don't like the, I don't like the overall pattern because again, it, it's a club house pattern, right? The thing about a club house pattern is always got that four on the floor steady beat, that boom, 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 boom. So I need to add a couple of loops in here, right? Because I'm going to go to my loop library and Band and Box, have, they've given you a ton of loops, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you, I'm, I'm going to go to my loop library and find a couple of loops that will help boost this overall sound here, right? So again, so and I had actually had to get another piece of paper, right? I got so many loops here, right? So I found some. I don't want to. I don't want to go through all of them, right? Because again, I don't want to take all day. But if you notice, you've got you've got acoustic drums, you've got dubstep, hip hop, house techno, ah, house techno. Exactly what I'm looking for. Because again, I want a house beat. I want the kind of house beat. I want this. I'm gonna say I already picked it, right? But I went through it, it was complexro boost. I have no idea what Complexro Boost means, <laughs> but I thought it'd be good. So it's Techno Trance um, Complexro Boost, right? So where is Techno Trance Complexro Boost at? It's somewhere in here. Techno Trance Complexro Boost. I've got tech, Techno Trance. What is it? Techno Trance. How, it's House Techno Trance. I'm sorry. House Techno Trance Complexo Boost, right? So I'm going through my loops here trying to find it. Again, I had picked it out before, so which was a little bit easier. And there's Techno Trans Complexo. So I use Techno Trans Complexo Boost, 
Um, one B minor, one B minor E A. Let's see what that sounds like, right? I'm gonna audition it for you. Ah, uh, that wasn't the right one. Maybe this was the right one. That's the one I want. I want that. So I want that heavy four on the floor beat. That's the one I want, right? So I'm gonna pick that, right? As my as my loop. So now, so now I have the drums, and now I have. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got to generate here. I've got to generate to get this loop generated, right? So now I've got that 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 four on the floor house beat that I was looking for. So when you add that with the drum set that's already there, and I'm again, I'm going to back off some of this other stuff, right? So let me take the guitar out. I just want you to get these drums now. So that's my drums, right? So again, I've got that heavy, heavy four on the floor beat. I've got the nice hi hat that's coming in from the pattern itself, right? So again, so I'm going okay. I like that, right? What else would you might find in a in a in a song like this, right? Is also if I add another percussion element in it to make it just a little bit busier, right? I felt like that would help it out a whole lot. So I went back and I went to I went and I decided to try to find another loop that I would like, right? So I went and I looked for house techno trance house swirl, house techno trance house swirl, right? House techno trance house Swirl is what I was looking for. Let me see if I can find see if I can find it again. And like I said, I'll audition these, right? Okay, so it's swirl uh, EV16. And let's see. Ah, so there's my percussion, right? So again, so now when I add percussion in, and you can tell it's gonna it's gonna create a huge difference in the overall beat pattern. So now I've got a four on the floor beat, I've got the normal drums that came with this with the pattern. And now I've also got this, 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 this percussion. Check it out now. See, see how it's already getting more energy. It's got more energy already. And that's what I was looking for. So again, if I add the other elements in, and I'm not worried about the volume level because I fixed it my doll, but I just want to make sure I get that beat, that, that, that rock solid hard beat that gets people moving. That's exactly what I was looking for. So again, so what I've done is I've taken the drums, the standard drums in the pattern, right? And I've added two extra loops and I've added a percussion loop and I've added a four on the floor beat that I wanted to give you that house pattern. What is the other thing that I did here is also what I did was I just said, okay, you know what? I like that, but it's too slow. That's too slow. 110 beats per minute is too slow for the club, right? So I went in, I changed the beats per minute and I cranked it up to 118. So now when I crank it up to 118, again, these are all things that give it a brand new flavor. So now I've got it at 118 beats per minute. And that's where I am now. So now I'm at 118 18 beats per minute, right? So now that I've got a now that I've got the beat set the way I like it at, I've got the tempo set the way I like it at, right? Now I can get on with further enhancing the overall production of the song. So I'm going to open up another pattern here, right? There was one more thing I wanted to show you here was that I also wanted to make sure that I added a solo component because, because basically what happens is that when you're talking about club music, right? Again, the beat is more important than the actual lyrics. The lyrics can be a bit important, but what if you ever notice how these, these club songs, right? They last, some of them last like they last 20 minutes, right? It's because of the beat. It's because they have an infectious beat. It's not really about, I mean, it's kind of about the song, but at the same time, it's not as much about the song. So, I, but I want also, I said, if I break up and just have beats going with nothing else, right? Let me just add something else in there. So I decided to add some solo parts in there of a solo synthesizer. This was not a good song, for, I felt, for a saxophone or for a guitar because it's also electro, right? Well, if you got electro, right, then you want the synthesizer to be, you want, the, I'm sorry, you want the, the solo to be based on a synth and not anything else. So I found a synth pattern for a soloist in Band in the Box, right? And I think that starts around uh, bar 53 or so. And it gives me that overall feel of what it would sound like with a synthesizer in it, right? Again, I've added some other things too. I've added, of course, I always add stuff. If you saw my video about having a fuller sound, you will notice that it takes on a new element when you add more elements in. In this particular case, I want to add a synthesizer in and only bring it in in certain in certain sections of the song and, of course, take it out in certain, certain sections, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Because I felt like that was important. And so now when I bring the synthesizer, it's taking a while to generate this one here, right? I don't know why. Maybe it's because I got so much stuff going on in my system. But um, it should pop up in a second be ready to go. Let's see if we can get this thing going here. Uh, 
and I've got my synthesizer here now. There you go. That, to me, that's great. That's exactly what I wanted in here, right? So now I've got my basic song down. I've got exactly how I wanted to go. Again, I do my mixing in my DAW. So, you know, so I'm not really worried about the volume levels, right? Again, I, of course, I, like I said, when I, you, you saw my video about uh, having a fuller song, right? I've added some organ. I've added a couple of extra, extra synths in here, right? But again, my loop pattern is still consistent throughout. I wanted that four and a floor kick. I wanted that percussion to augment and help accent the standard drum pattern that was in this actual pattern generated. Only other thing I want to show you guys as far as bad in the box goes also is that I created some interesting part markers in here, right? So if you look at my bar settings, right? If you notice the red line here, right? If you look at my bar settings, right? And if you notice the same chord is here throughout for the first eight bars. Well, the reason why I did that is because that wasn't important to me because I was not going to have music in that component anyway, in that section anyway, right? I just wanted a basic drum beat to get people up, to get people moving during that section. So I just decided to augment and edit the bars accordingly, right? So when I do that now, and I don't know what's going on here. I'm a little bit slow here. So now when I do that, right, what I've done is I've muted the bass, I've muted the synthesizers. In other words, I've muted every instrument in this pattern except for the drums is what I did. So I muted everything else because I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to play. And then at bar five, I only brought the bass in. So if you look at my bar settings for bar five, you will see, remember, and once elements stay muted, they stay muted until you bring them back into play. So what I did was I muted for the first four bars, I muted all of the instruments is what I did. And for the next set, I brought only the bass back in. So if you listen to it, you will notice that it starts out with just the drum, which is what I wanted. You know, give me time, get about four. Come on, girl, let's go dance, right? You know. Then I brought the bass in. So now I got my bass kicking in, right? You know. And then at bar nine, I brought everything in. Now everything is in. Now I didn't have a solo in, in my in my in my final cut. I took the solo out. I didn't bring the solo in until late, much much later in the song, right? But again, I brought everything in up to that point. The other thing that I did that I thought was kind of interesting also is that if you get up in here at bar fifteen, watch bar sixteen. Now, if you notice that bar 16, right, what did I do at bar 16, right, is I've got that dent, dent, right, and those are chops. So what I did was at bar 16, right, so what I did was in the chord settings window, and if you got my chord settings windows here, right, because what I did was beat one was normal, right, but on beat two, I wanted that to, I pushed it, I pushed that chord up an eighth of a, a beat. So I pushed it up an eighth, right, so that it would, and, and then at the same time that I pushed it up, right, I just pushed it there, and then on the third beat, I gave it a shot. Everything but the drums. So everything is like, that's that's how you get that, dun, dun, that's how you get that, dun, dun sound, right? Is that you push and then you put a shot in, right? And it gives you that type of sound. So that's what I did there, right? So again, if you listen to it again. And I'm setting the song up is what I'm doing, right? That's now, and I start singing. So that's exactly how I put it together, right? So I put the song together that way. Again, I added organ, I added another synthesizer, and as usual, I added a solo synth, right? But the main thing is that I added two loops to enhance the overall production and give me that actual house sound. So how does it sound in my doll, right? So again, I'm gonna close band in the box now, and I'm gonna show, I'm just gonna play, give you a couple of minutes of how it sounded overall in my DAW. So when you listen to it in my DAW now, again, I've mixed everything together. And notice I use a lot of what we call busing. I bus a lot in my systems, right? And the reason why is because I, I want I want to be able to control, right now I'm looking at uh, 20 some tracks, I think it is, 28 tracks, right? But um, I had three sets of drums, right? So I created a bus just for the drums right here. If you notice, this is just just for the drums, a bus just for the drums, a bus just for the music, a bus for the lead vocals, a bus for the background vocals, a bus for the shout, right? But that helps me control things as I'm controlling the mix going throughout instead of me having to go and try to adjust 29 faders. I'm also a big fan of, I also do a lot of panning. Well, I'll pan left, pan right. I mean, the drums will be center right, you know, but I might put the guitar a little bit over, might put the organ a little bit over. If you notice, I'm doing some a little bit of panning here. Yeah, that's right. This can't be done in an hour. It can't be done in two minutes, right? So anybody thinks you can, well, more power to you. You know, these this type of music, these type of songs, it take a little bit more time than that, right? And also, what you do is you discover things as you go along, 
and you find out that things might work a little bit better as you listen to different versions of it. But now if I play it, and again, I've got my actual drums. I've got all the drums going into a single button. So now I can control this fader here up and down. I can raise them up and down and put everything together. My bass just kicked in. I've got my bass kicking in, right? Now watch the rest of my music will come in, right? Up here, bar nine. Notice again, see, I've mixed it now, so it's not like it was in Band of the Box. It's not so overpowering, right? It's all together now, right? So from that point on, right, it's just a matter of me putting my vocals in, right? I do a lot of vocals, of course, right? So, you know, so my vocals are, um, I've got what well, I've got four tracks of lead vocals, right? Just to kind of give it a better, better flavor, to give it a more spread of dimension, right? Left and right. I do not pan center uh, because people listen to music on cell phones, so I pan left and pan, pan right. Not necessarily hard left, hard right, but a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Sometimes I might do a little harder, a little harder, like a quarter to the left, quarter to the right, just to give, just to fill the sound out, especially, like I said, people listen to music on cell phones. So now if you listen to my lead vocals. I see you walking down the street and I start to cry. So that's the lead vocals, right? Again, I don't want to take a lot of time. That's why I'm kind of rushing through this, right? Also, I thought that the, the little shout that I had when I, there's a section in the song where I did a shout. I thought that was kind of interesting because when I got to the shout part portion, which was fun, right? I wanted to set up a percussion break where the music stopped, the percussion came in, right? And I did this shout, but I wanted the shout to carry over a little bit into the percussion break, right? So I put an echo on the shout. And if you listen to the shout in isolation, you'll hear when I go, ah, whatever, you know. And that, 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 that echo is carrying over, right? And it, it may sound a little weird by itself, right? But when you listen to it over the overall context of the music, And notice what is there? Just my full on the floor. I'm just using my full on the floor beat at that, at that point. Then I bring my percussion back in. My percussion's in. I brought my bass in right here. Now the rest of the music. And notice there's a little bit of that just full synthesizer. Ah, synthesizer in the background. So again, so that's exactly how I put this all together, right? But the most important thing is that when I created the band in the box pattern, it was at 110 beats per minute. It had a standard disco drum set. I went and I added extra loops and I added a percussion loop from the band in the box loop library. I added a four on the floor kick drum because I wanted that, that house club kick bass drum going on throughout the song. And that was a loop that I found in the loop library. So I added those elements and they made a huge difference and the overall production of this song. So again, so I hope that this helps you as far as your production goes. I hope this helps you in putting things together. And um, this song will actually be out on, I think it drops on August the 7th, something like that. But again, just listen to the tail end of it, right? You can kind of get an overall feel of how it was put together. <laughs> And if you notice again, look how many harmony lines I have here. So again, so that's why I, when I say, you know, that doing this in a, a short period of time, probably not very feasible, right? I'm doing four-part harmony. I have eight tracks. I'm doing four-part harmony. Then I took and copied those four-part harmonies. I pan one side to the left. I pan one side to the right. Again, just to fill it out. But those things take a bit of time. But if you take spend a little time, your production will come out pretty good. And remember now, this is not a million dollar studio. This is being done on a home PC, right? I'm using Sonar. I'm using Band in the Box to put my music together. And I'm doing mixing and adding, um, you know, just different effects to give me an overall, overall quality sound. So I hope this helps in your production efforts. I hope this helps. And I hope the video wasn't too long. I tried to make it as short as I could make it. And I will see you next time. So again, thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.